So Devan has asked for the complex data types. So see, complex data type, what are complex actually? Not only real numbers, uh, Python can also handle some complex numbers as I said. Okay, it's associated with C maths, so it's nothing but the complex number maths. So a complex number is represented by uh, something uh, like x plus y i, that is an imaginary part. And this Python converts the real numbers, that is x, and y into some complex numbers that is complex of x comma y that's simple so you can write complex number with c or uh, c math import c math and then you can move on you can check that whether it is a real number that is uh, write something like you can go and simply import c math right there the one you can see there not for everyone please don't keep a uh, much attention over here okay so it's like import c math you will get for c this it says this and you can check for the real and imaginary parts so you said in the morning that you were having problems when you uh, wrote i and j or something like that okay so yes you can someone came here. three okay Right. Someone can okay, let me wait for two to three seconds here. Many more to come, three more to come. Fine. And you can check actually what I said is you can check that x is you can make of z, which is your x, or you can give it as complex of x comma y. Who is there? Mahek. and you can check which of the part is your real z dot real z dot imaginary you can go and check by the way i am giving you an introduction to the complex number many of this. the complex method basically returns a complex number when real and imaginary please mute when real and imaginary parts are provided or it converts a string into a complex number so basically you have to write this indexes you have to write as it is a complex then you have to write first the real part right guys first the real part and inside the real you have to write the imaginary numbers that is the uh, proper syntax of this so real is uh, real is something it's set default to zero always it's always set default to zero and imaginary is always always set to default to zero for any type of numbers when you come uh, tell the, to make it into a complex number right there fine so let's see how we can make if i write put this into a syntax of hashtag let me small it okay so let me write a complex of complex 2 comma minus 3 what I'll get is 2 minus 3j right is okay and let me write complex of 1 I will getting 1 plus 0j see for complex of nothing we'll get 0j and complex of if I write something like 9j, see what you get, 5 minus 9j, as simple as that. So this is how you get any type of complex number that is nothing, I said, as I said, it is set default to 0. If you have uh, not given any imaginary part, it will give as 0j. And the man was asking that if, if it's a j or i something, in Python 3 what I saw is, is always j right there, in Python 2 or uh, maybe previous versions we were we using i2 also then okay divine is your clear the doubt is clear yes okay so let's move ahead with today's agenda um there's one more guy again it's 46 where have those s3 gone fine okay so as i said yesterday so first let me tell you that how can you check your system version with what you are dealing with actually okay 
now to check your system version again you have to import the system and then you will be going to print your system version and uh, just writing print sys dot version and this line is optional for me i can write or else i cannot write I, it, this is optional for me right i am just giving a heading there that is system version as soon as i have, I have written it in a string so it will be printed as just i have written right so import the system and directly go and you can write for sys dot version just go and print you will see your system version python system version actually so i am having 3.7.6 there fine you can everyone can check yourself okay so for getting more information of your system version you can just go and print system version information someone came amisha and for that you can go with the print sys dot version underscore of sorry underscore of info that's all go ahead run you will get the system version also okay so yesterday i completed my topic with rand range and many of you were having some problems between the rand range so what is exactly rand range you go and import random and rand range was something that i was giving a range actually i was i will be discussing it so i was giving range of some numbers you can say is some x comma y now when i give a range okay every time in python when i give a range there so what happens is your this is your some number x and this is your some number y okay so your number always start with x whatever you have given and it will go till y minus 1 always okay the last number what you have given you will be get the print of the number starting and till the last number minus 1 that is if you give if you give a range of 10 to let's say 15 so you getting numbers from 10 11 12 13 14 that's it same 15 minus 1 is 14 so you will be getting it something this like numbers okay so random is something which runs according to this suppose i give so let me give it this is comments and up okay so let me take a random there so i'm printing random dot rand now you have too many options there you have rand range you have rand end okay you have rand are you able to see okay you have random you have rand end and you have rand range we will be using everything out there and we'll see how it works on fine so today we'll dealing with the random range let's say i'm dealing with random range and i'm writing for 1 to 20 So guys, can you let me know how uh, till what range I will be getting my numbers? That is one to nineteen now. Okay, so I'll getting a random number between one to nineteen. There are any no problems? Fine. Moving ahead. So we saw how to take uh, the inputs, how to print the last name, first name, and everything. So we have some operators in Python which we deal with. We have some operators basically. so we have different type of operators we have uh, you can say arithmetic operators assignment operators boolean operators and first we will be dealing with the assignment uh, arithmetic operators okay so let's move with the arithmetic operators now arithmetic operators are nothing but the plus minus multiplication division whatever you have done right it's very simple so let's deal with that so giving a heading of is mute operators in python so i'll be dealing first with the arithmetic operators 
Today, as the name suggests, arithmetic operatives are basically fundamental units of the arithmetic signs which we use in normal daily life. That is plus minus multiplication division. So let me take x comma y is as 5 comma 10. My x is 5, y is 10. Now particularly I am doing an addition that is very simple x plus y will be getting the value in subtraction. Focus on the results you are getting that is an integer actually okay. Focus on the results you will be getting something different now. So, have you seen what has been done here? For addition, I did x plus y that is 15. For subtraction, I did x minus y that is 5 minus 10 minus 5. For multiplication, I did x multiplied by y that is 50. For division, I did y divided by x. Okay, now I have not divided x by y, I have divided y by x. My y is 10 and x is 5. So, 10 divided by 5 is now it is coming 2.0. So, it is a category of float now. So, we need to divide uh, basically it into an integer value because everything we are doing, we are getting an integer value there, fine guys, okay. So, when dealing with this, when we give a single slash out there, we get always a float value. So, for getting it, we will have to use double slash which is also called as integer division sign. So, we will do the, it is also called as floor or integer division and there we have to write. So, what will the outcome come? Only the 2 there. Okay, right guys? Only the 2. Moving ahead, we will have a new moderator called as the modulus. Modulus basically gives you the remainder. That is, if I say, so when 10 y, divide, y divided by x leaves the remainder as 0, right guys? When you uh, divide 10 by 5, what do you get the remainder as? 5, 10 by 5 is remainder is 0 there. Okay, no problems. Fine. So, the next and the last operator of arithmetic is the exponent. Because if I take, I have 5 and I have 10, right guys? So, I can take it as y to the power of x and let's go and you will get this again. suppose you have 2 and you are getting to the power of 3 you will get a 8 out there that's a very simple techniques of getting so any confusions in any other step this single sign double sign modulus and exponential value any confusions in that right up in here in the chat box fast any confusions there you can see people lifting big class Okay, no, no, fine, you can see no there, okay, good to see, that's all. So, let's do a very small question out there, so let's take A is equals to 100, B equals to 2.26, C is 3, D is A, C. Mm -hmm. Let's take Q and C, let's take this, if you guys have read A square plus B square plus 2 AB guys, it's very simple, A plus B whole square is A square plus 2 AB plus B square, that's nothing but A square, 2 AB and this B square, it's very simple. And with these informations, I will be printing the someone came of Viral Sharma. So, yep, so I'll be printing the type of mm, let me first go print Q. I'll be printing Q, L, T, E, and the type of E. Let's see what comes. So, I get Q as 1 and this has 33 and then 
sum this value and the type of E is a float value. Yeah, pretty. It will come a float value there. Okay. So, yep. That's D with the normal arithmetic paths. Okay. That is an arithmetic section over there. Next comes your comparison operators. Now, what are comparison operators? As the name suggests you, comparison is basically where we used to compare between two values or two objects or two elements, whatever you want. Okay. So, let's deal with the comparison operators. So comparison operators. Now here you have mainly six type of operators. In comparison, you have mainly six operators. Let's go. So x and y we already have. So let me define a comma b as two comma four. Okay. So now if I say that is a greater than b, if a is greater than b, is this statement true or false? It's uh, obviously it's a false statement, right? because 2 is not greater than b, it's always false. So it comes as false. Instead I get to this, I get b is greater than a and it's coming false or oh, sorry, b is greater than a, it's this one. So it's true, right? Okay. So this is first, first operator is a less than sign, uh, you can say it's greater than sign and second is a less than sign, right? So greater than, less than, and then comes your greater than equals to. So what does this actually mean? It will say that either it will compare, it will give you true either if A is greater than B or is A is equals to B. So I can see this both conditions are not true. If I check A is greater than B, no, it's not greater than B. So if, if A is equals to B, no, if it is not again equals to B. So this will give you false there. Right, guys. If you write a is less than equals to b, so in this condition a is less than b is correct, but a is not equals to b, right? Still, you will be getting a true answer. Why? Because when you apply these, any of the conditions if come true, you will getting an answer of true out there. Fine. Okay. So let's compare with this b equals to a. You will getting true. Instead of b less than equals to a be getting false right there. So how to compare that if any two values are equal or not? So we know that we can assign any values which single equals to. But when to check that if any uh, number or if any value is existing for both the uh, variables or both the numbers. So we can go with C, let's say um, A is, what is the value of A? 2 and B 4. So let me see that c is also 4 now. So I'll be checking that if a is equals equals to c. That is nothing but if a is equals to 4 and b is equals to 4. Okay. So what will the result coming out? It will come true. Now one second. No, no. b is 4 I think so. So c. Yes. b is 4 and c is 4. So I get b c value as true right so moving on so if i want to see that any two variables or any two numbers are not equal if i write if i mean to say that these two numbers are not equal what are the statement i have to write is nothing but i will be writing that b is not equals to c so is this statement correct or not if this statement is not correct exactly because b is 4 and c is also 4 so this is not correct it will give you false out there but if I write a is not equals to b okay, I'll writing a is not equals to b that's a true statement why because a is 2 and b is 4 and this is not equal exactly so if I run this I'll getting a value of true okay so this is particularly called as not operator or you can say as uh, you can say it's as yes you can say is a not operator fine so this is a not sign there whenever anything if you write uh, a true value and you write this there you will getting value okay let's print first uh, 
this coming sub problems you can go and check for node of a or you can print simply not of a you're getting value false you can write not or you can use this sign there fine so we have operators that is greater than less than greater than equals to less than equals to equals equals to and we have not also there so these are where your comparison operators so any problems in comparison operators false what false yeah it's false any uh, problem in comparison please mute Aditya Khare please mute down uh, sir, what is the meaning of double equal? Double equal is uh, used for comparing the values. See, if I give that uh, x is equals to 10, so I am assigning 10 in the x. But if I write that x is equals equals to 10, I am checking that whether x is equals to 10 or not. Okay, this will give you no output. Okay, where if you write this, and um, if you go with this, and if I write x, it will take you okay, x is 10. But if I write x is equals equals to 10, it will tell me whether the, this statement what I have written is true or false. So it's a true statement because x is equals equals to 10, right? Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. So any more problem to anyone in the comparison operators? See, come reply fast. See, no one, no, no, no. Okay, I think it's no one having problem. Good to see that. Yeah. So next dealing with the Boolean operators. Now what are Boolean? Okay. So guys, Boolean operators are something where you get again the true or false values. But you have some operators there and some in Boolean operators, we have a subdomain of binary operators. So what is the term you get understand by binary? Binary is something having more than one that is two or you can have three, basically two, right? So Boolean in Boolean operators, we have three kinds of operators, only three, which is and, or, and not, okay? Which is and, or, and, not these are the three operators there and among these this and and or are the binary operators among of these three and this is not a binary operator as i have used here you will see what is basic use of that okay so where to use and where to use or and where to use not there fine okay suppose let's take a situation if i say i have some two values and i want to compare and i need to get an uh, true value from both the conditions so i'll be using and there or i can be using or there now again the situation comes then what to use there is there i can use and and there also i can use or so let's take a very good example suppose uh, your dad say suppose your dad say that if you pass in the examination i'll be giving you a mobile phone i will be i will be buying a mobile phone for you okay so that's the situation that only and only if you pass in the examination you will be getting a mobile phone there right Fine guys, so there can be an another situation, there can be an another situation that if you didn't pass in the examination, still you will be getting a mobile phone, right? One second, hold on, there's some problems. see someone is presenting I have to remove this guy where is this guy gave him a personal message that okay someone gave a message in the whatsapp that 
not to present because i am uh, presenting here and i can't see a time here to size okay so please make mention that guy not to present here okay fine so that was i pull in up it is that we have three kinds of that is and or and not of there fine so i came with a condition over that that if you pass in the examination you will be getting a mobile phone there and you if and only if you pass in the examination then you will getting a mobile phone and suppose you didn't pass in the examination what is that again you are getting a mobile phone so what are the conditions for that so for only and only if we will be using and and only if we will be using or okay that's make a pretty mess out there so let me clear it so let's see x equals to 2 y equals to 4 so i am giving conclusion from it that i am saying x is equals to true 2 or y is equals to 4 now i am printing x equals or x is greater than y and y is less than x now you can make a sense from it that what i am trying to say is i am checking whether x is greater than y so it will give me a value that is true or false right and i am also checking that if x is less y is less than x or y is greater than x that is a strange value sign okay i am also checking that y is greater than x okay that's all so if in both the sides if i get a true value over there so the whole value i will be getting here is true if any of the side is coming false i will not be getting a true outcome out there fine so let's see someone has text why can't we use and instead of and python use there it's no problem go and use so y greater than y and this so this is false suppose i am saying that you pass in okay your result in the examination is true that you passed okay and your chances for getting a phone is also now true fine so what will your outcome or you can say that the dad also get agrees with your result so chances for your phone will be your result seeing your mood of your dad as well as seeing your result what will be your result and you will be getting a phone out there right in if you didn't pass take the situation out there if you didn't pass out there that is false now you use will not be getting a phone there so i mean to say is exactly that and will be used only in the conditions if both the conditions are true or will be you uh, use if any of the condition is true suppose i say that result or that now you will getting a true value by because or will take that if any of the value is true it's true a result if the result is totally true right there so that is where you will be using and and or right now what about not not is something if you have a true value put it into a not you will get the reciprocal of it that is false value if you have a false value given in a not you will get a true value there so that's how it works on so now let's have some uh, tricky questions over there okay so what if if you want to print at the exact date and time of your system the exact date and time or let's say the exact date of your system what is the system your date i am having a date of uh, 6 let's see the date no date has been seen okay let's print it out okay. so i'll be writing from date time import the date and today is equals to date dot today I will printing the
today's date as uh, equals to is nothing but today let's see what comes so today's date is 2020 and by default in python your day year come first then the, your month come and then your date come okay fine if you want the exact time to and for time you will, will have to write it for import date time and in now you will be writing date time dot date date time dot the variable you have used and in print you will be printing current date and time is the guy presenting everything well okay fine so current date and time so now I will be having some of the steps of how I can print the time. That is, I will be writing now dot str of time. That is nothing but I am converting the time into a string. str of time. And I will be writing it percentile d for day. Then percentile m for month. And then percentile y for the year. And then I will be taking it as I want percentile h for the hour then the minutes and then the seconds i want print something like this so let's go and see what comes out so i see the current date and time which is 2 7 2020 and the time is now 18 23 22 okay so time is getting faster let's move ahead and we'll see that so we have various options now let's say that if a user comes out and you uh, it, uh, he or she asks you that if i give you a radius how can you print me the area of the square or the area of the circle basically right so you have been given a radius over there and you will be asked to calculate the area of a circle that's very simple these are the very basic questions which uh, everyone you will get in the examinations too right so from math i will be importing pi that is pi is 3.14 you all know 22 by 7 so i'll take r as an input in the float because r can be in float right so enter a radius of the circle and that's it whatever you get and give the area is equals to what is the area of a circle right guys pi r square that is pi you have imported pi from the math library and this pi multiplied by r squares so it's pi r square that is r square simple pi into r square so you give a radius out there suppose i give 2.5 i'll get the area that is 19.3 for something like this okay that is how you work on there nice okay so let's say uh, if i want to print any calendar that's yes, how we see in over the internet right now if i ask you to go and print me the calendar of 2040 so you're saying sir i'll think uh, watching it in the google or i will going to a calendar shop and i'll ask for uh, that uh, Please give me a calendar of 2040 <laughs> okay so that's not possible right so you can print the calendar of 2040 within just of two line of codes that's very 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 simple you have to just write import the calendar right then it's very simple i have an year let's say i'm taking for 2040 right so I will simply writing print me the calendar dot or the calendar dot calendar basically print me the calendar of this particular year that I have given you. So it'll get me a calendar over there. You can see okay. This is a calendar of 2040. Right there. So even now you want a specific calendar of a specific month. Uh, right like in whatever months you have been born so i have i was born in december so i'll be getting my birth months out there so that is also very easy to print guys uh you take a year, year as your whatever year let's say 2020 and i'm taking my month as 12 and uh, printing so i'll be seeing on which day my birthday is coming so i'll be printing a calendar of a particular month 
and uh, first I'll be writing the year name what the year is and then followed by the month there so let's see okay so this is a calendar of December 2020 so I'm having my birthday on Saturday that's well that's good so let's move ahead these are the basic questions and very good questions so you can work on fine so let's move ahead with the uh, any confusions or any problems here sir we can use c time yes you can use there fine it's good to go so let's use the assignment operators so what assignment operators does like we have assigned this is an assignment operator if i write c equals to 12 i have assigned 12 in c right there fine now what if i do if i assign if i want to assign more values to c without removing the actual values if i write c equals to 10 so if a night uh, if i uh, print the c now i get 10 out there right what about the 12 if i want 12 not to be removed and and adding the 10 into the 12 what i will do it is i have c equals to 12 and i want c 10 now you can see the steps what i have done is i have added this 10 into the c into the c i have added this 10 that's all you go and now you see your c it's coming 22 right so with plus equals to operator you can add a value to a specific variable whatever you are using before the plus equals that is c right now if i write that c minus equals to 10 what the value are you getting it you will be getting okay this capital c small c okay you will be getting it 12 why why 12 comes now because your c is having 22 the 22 minus 10 is something 12 that's so simple so this is a step how you will be working on for the assignment operators you have a lot of steps there c multiplied by 2 or multiplied by equals to 2 and print the c over there you will getting 24 right 12 multiplied by 2 there comes 24 and this so on it works on you have double everything you have read in the arithmetic operators you can come in there so we'll get with the predefined technique sums so let's take x equals to 10 and y equals to 20. So if I print is if I print percent x or if I print percent d and okay uh, right here percent x so whatever the value I will be getting out it's 10 right so if I write print the same value percent f percent x what will I get 10.000 so everything changes whatever you give in the percent size also so let's say my y is a float of y y is a float so what is y actually 20.0 now if I print percentile f and I give percentile y you can see the that is 20 by something but if I write set f and percent y sorry it's s now what you will get exactly is 20.0 why because now you have printed the value of y as a string and string does not changes any values there whatever you have you will getting the output c plus 10 equals to c is equals to c plus 10 right yes such needs it's right exactly okay so it is how it works now i have seen yesterday someone was asking me a very generic error so it was like he was trying to print something and let me give you the sum of percentile x percent d and percent d percent d now what he did is actually and you what you all will be doing if you are new you all will be doing so i will i too did okay so percentile x percentile y percentile some or you can say 
x plus y. So he did something like this. Okay. So actually he wanted to print and this is very generic and the first time you will be doing like this. So the sum of percent d that is percent x and the sum of percent d that is percent y. So sum of x and y is x plus y. Very simple. It's very correct line. Okay. So the basic problem you get there is when you run it, you will getting that. Okay. What are these now? x, x, x and so on. Right. So for all the percent you have used, you only need to specify percent for once in this one. Fine. You don't need to specify for the one percent, then second one, second percent, then the third for the third percent. You just remove these all. Remove this. These percent to keep a come out there. That's all what you did. This is put a inverted comma there. Yeah. So for every individual percent, you will be giving a one percentile there. And in one percentile, you're writing your first will be the x and then will be y and then will x plus y. And now you hit run, you're getting the sum of 10 and 20 is 30 out there. Easy guys. You can uh, also give the numbers out there. You can write that. Okay. You can also go and write that print the sum of Uh, person D and person D is person D. Meanwhile, you can give the numbers there like 30, 20, yes, 30 plus 20, right? This is the sum of 30 and 20 is 50. Any problems till now? Voice is not clear. Okay, Just wait a second. How can we print the ASCII values? Yes, okay, precision error. How do we fix the precision error? Where you are getting the errors, right? Kalvat Tarun Kumar, where you are getting the errors? You can specify me. I'll let you know. Anyone with any errors? Someone asked for me. So ASCII, it's very easy to print the ASCII. We have O option there, or ORD actually. We have ORD of any number, you will be getting the. So ASCII codes, he has asked the ASCII code. Who has asked? Let me see. Someone has asked for the ASCII codes. Sri Vamshika, fine, okay. Well, it's a good question. So ASCII code, let me tell, how can we set the uh, decimal points? You can write that after F you want, if you write it, right? You want two point F, or you can you want something like f point or 2.3 float numbers right you can specify accordingly right there so ascii code is something uh, you can say is ascii actually stands for the american standard code for uh, information interchange the full form for ascii is basically a s c i i this is this stands for american standard code for information interchange like every every key you see in your keyboard has a particular ascii code right which is not same for them okay so let me print a ascii code for vamshika let's suppose uh, vamshika i am taking an ascii code of a capital a okay and i want to print the ascii code over there i'll be printing it uh, i'm writing is the ascii code or ASCII value actually, the ASCII value of A is, and it should be comma ORD of C, right? Because I have taken C as A. So you will be getting the ASCII code of A is 65. It's very easy of there to print the ASCII codes over there, fine. Okay, I'll be checking more questions there. Yep, no more questions, fine. So moving ahead, this is how you can get it, okay. So now the question comes like, if I want to concatenate any numbers, yeah, or if I want to join any numbers, what is concatenation? So guys, concatenation is nothing but only the additions, what we do, what we do actually, additions in one plus one like we have assigned numbers in the previous sections of x plus 
in this one c plus equals to 10 we have done the concatenation let me write that if i have done i have written a string one and in string one i have written let's suppose i's in the string two i am writing cream so string two is not defined So in string one, I am writing cream there, right? So if I write, if I print a string one, what should come there? I previously have a string one as ice. Now I have added cream in it, right? So my value would be ice cream there. Very clear, right? If I have my name or if I have sir's name as John, it's this guy made artificial intelligence actually. And this is equals to okay, it's C capital. Okay, so what will the name print? So if I go with name, I'll say it's John McCarty. Fine, guys, this is called concatenation. This is how you can concatenate strings. Now, if you want to print a multi line string, that is, multi line string is something if I write S. I need to write S and I'm just writing um, T R I N and G. I need to write something like this. So this is pretty wrong method. If you uh, need to write a multi line, you have to give three inverted commas and then you can work on. Then you can just get there. Now you're getting slash and slash and before everything that is nothing but the new line sign you are getting at the U. Go and print it. Now you're getting the exact value what we have done there, right? This is something called as multi-line strings. So yes, now we're dealing with the conditional statements, right? So what are conditional statements? So as conditions we get, conditions are something like you have to go in either of the sides. You will be given some of the options and you will be have to choose the correct option or you will have to choose any of the option in which you want to go there right so i performed a very simple operation of the conditional statement yesterday that was uh, you can see it was here right something in the, in the keyword someone asked no there it is yep this one after the name and this is conditional statement actually if and then is we'll see in condition statement in python we have three types that is if else and elif there out so you'll understand what how and how if works how else works and how if else works right guys okay so let's go and see so i'm giving you i'm saying now taking the questions of okay suppose I have a name and I have a password that is okay now I'm making a program just to log in into my window okay so it's very simple Take user input or username. It is input. Enter your name and password as input enter your password that's very really simple now if i'll check i'll be checking that if my username now see the conditions clearly now if my username is 
equals equals that is if my username becomes true that is if this situations come true so if my username is equals to the name so i'll be printing welcome name or else i'll be printing okay no no actually not so first we will check for that okay yes that's it error loading name that's it retry again that's very simple run it if my name is subit so I get a password over there so my password is it's a cool so I get there at error loading name retry again why it come because I have used SUMID in the all the lower cases and here my S is in uppercase right guys so even if my name password is right I got a error loading name there fine so now this is a simple use of how you can use if there so if this statement is not correct, it will throw the statement or you, it will throw the code directly to the else. Where you are saying that, okay, now print, okay, this is not correct, then print this, simple. If you don't give any options there, it will not print anything in the else statement. So if your, this condition is true, then it will print this. If, if it is not true, it will print this, right guys, okay. So let's see how elif works. Now we have, as I said, we have if, we have else and we have elif. So how elif works, consider the same code I'm typing here and now I will be checking that if username is equals to name, print vehicle name now and then I will be checking that now if the uh, password is equals equals to the password and it should be capital P. So the user password, if the user password, okay, if the name is, a, uh, uh, right, you can say if the name is true, then it's okay. And if the password is true, and then you can write it for cut, basically, cut, paste it there. So now you will checking that if your username is equals to name, okay. And then check that if the password is also same, then I will say welcome name. Okay. If any of this is incorrect, I'll be simply writing retry again. Okay. Or let me write this also. Incorrect credentials. Retry again. Okay. So run this now. Now you have used if in inside a if that is called as a nested if. Okay. So anyone errors there no problems fine run it so enter your name i'm taking my name correct enter your password i'm taking my password incorrect so i get it okay if the password is okay i need to give it here actually if the password is incorrect let me copy this line Print it over here. It's, it's incorrect. Password. That's it. Yep, run this. You'll get incorrect password because password is a small c double and it's capital C. So uh, see you have taken if the username is correct okay then check that whether password is also correct now if the password is correct welcome name and if the password is not correct write incorrect password incorrect password and if the username is also uh, is itself not correct directly print that incorrect credentials and retry again right that's it how it works out. now how elif will work elif have a different uh, method to work on right so for LF, I can let you give a option of 
see and you can say is for lf you can take age now if i'm taking some criterias let's say age of sun sun's age is let's say 21 father age is uh, around 40 mother age it's 38 okay okay we have three ages right so i'll check if sun age is equals equals to 21 then print you are a teenager not a teenager you are an adult sorry so before it you have to take input from the user so let me take that user is giving in the sun enter age and you should take it in integer so you will checking that whether the age is equals to 21 or not if it is equals to 21 you are an adult right lf if the this condition should be sun if the user input it's 21 or uh, it's 40 print you are father something it's very it's an, and if both the condition doesn't satisfy you are mother so user will basically give you an input so if it's 21 you are son if it's 40 you are father and if it's not 21 if it's not 40 then it's basically a mother then okay so i give an option so 48 so since it's not correct actually because it's 38 so you should not uh, use else let's say basically uh, for your understanding that how you can use else lf there fine guys so lf is something where you use else and if both so if this is condition is not true you are getting to another condition but not getting to the else you are getting to another condition that is lf and you will check another condition there and this is this in the examination might you will be getting that uh, if you can use a condition in else so you can't use conditions in else else is something which only print the commands okay no it it will not check any conditions out there this is what you deal with these all things the very pretty small things these are okay so let me discuss with the loops now so what are loops loops are generally repetitions right loops are any problems till now no no one is writing anything so let's see everyone it good so what are loop guys guys uh, loops are generally what we do in our daily life that what a clock generally do that it uh, revolves around and around and it keeps moving on that is basically a repetitions okay so what is the time till the clock revolves until or till it has battery life there right guys okay so loops are generally repetitions in programming you can say loops are uh, used to repeat a block of codes until a specified condition is being met okay once you met the specified condition you gave the loop will stop so you have two type of loops there in python you have for loop and you have while loop okay and there you have some jump statements which will be you will be saying as break or conditions okay or continue sorry so let's start with the loops over there so let's deal with that okay what are the loops and for, before dealing with that i'll be saying you something about the ranges how ranges works on so as i said guys if you write a range and you give any number out there 
so if I print x, okay, small x, I get 0 to 45. That is basically a range over there. You have actually put a range and you have print some values there, right? So this is called a range. So if I want to print, let me uh, make you understand the while loop first. So we'll be dealing with the while loops. Not that. So while loop are specifically, uh, specifically the loops which will be iterating for a number of time until and until the condition is true. So till the condition will be true, the loop will be iterating and iterating that is it will be repeating on that day. So until the condition is true, it will be repeating and giving you the output if you want there. Fine. So let's take a very simple question. Okay, what is happening here? I want to print the value of x as long as the x is less than 10. So I basically want to print the value of x as long as the x is less than 10. Once it gets equal to 10 or greater than 10, I should come out of the loop. I should not go inside the loop right there right so basically loop are used for printing something which you need over and over again if i want to print the same thing for 100 times what should should i write it for 100 times no i will keep basically i will giving a loop out there and will run it for 100 times and it will run out there right so let's come with this i am giving x as my zero and writing a condition that while x is less than 10 while the x is less than 10 what I have to do is see this is the basically indentation this is called as indentation after you give a colon or there you'll get a white space that's this is called indentation basically for line if you want line numbers there press escape and plus l you will get the line numbers over there fine guys okay so while x is less than 10 what I'll writing is print x so while x is less than 10 print the value of x and after printing the value increment the value of x with x equals to 1 that is once I give uh, 0 comes here 0 will be checked that 0 is less than 10 okay 0 is less than 10 is a true value so is it true then print the x value what is x 0 has been printed now in 0 I have added 1 so what is the value of x now it's it's 1 now so one will go here and it will be checked that one is less than 10. Yes, it's less than 10. It's true. So one will be printed. Now again, one comes here and one gets added up. It's become two. So it will go on repeating it something like this. And until and until it becomes uh, 10, it will be keep printing. Okay. So we'll be getting from zero to nine actually. Right guys? Because I have, haven't given equals to 10. So 10 has not been printed. First zero has been get there. And you have got 0 then it incremented by 1 you get 1 then by plus 1 then 2 plus 1 3 4 5 6 and so on you get right this is all how you get the uh, while so this is our first question any doubts in this section let me know can x be yes you can write it there for 1 you can write it for x plus plus Hirat, you can write it no problem anyone having any problem till now You can ask if any problem is there. Prashna has written no. What about others? And they have 46. No. Okay, then it's good to see. Let's move on. Diksha is no. Fine. Okay. So this is uh, as long as the x value is less than 10, I'm getting all the values of x less than 10 there. Right? Okay, let's move. If, but in this condition, if I copy this and if I write this, now if I write one there, what will happen? What the, will be the numbers I will be getting out there? So the loop will be starting from one now. Instead of zero, it will be starting from one and I will be getting the values from one to nine now. Right, it's very easy. Now if you write here, 
टू और ओके इट्स टू राइट गुड सी सी यू गेटिंग ओनली दी ऑड वैल्यूज दैट इज वन थ्री आफ्टर द इंटरवल्स ऑफ टू नाउ वंस कम वन वन प्लस टू इज थ्री थ्री विल कम देयर एंड थ्री प्लस टू इज फाइव देन फॉर इट्स सेवन एंड देन फॉर इट्स नाइन इट्स वेरी सिंपल टू सी दैट ओके नाउ इन द सेकेंड स्टेज और इन द सेकेंड कंडीशन आई गिव अ कंडीशन दैट Uh, I want to exit the loop immediately. Intervals in between the loops. I want to exit the loop in between. Uh, let's say I say that as soon as the value becomes five, as soon as the value becomes five in this loop, as soon as the value becomes five, I want to get out of the loop. Just I want to print that one and three. That's all. And in the five also. That's it. okay. so as soon as the value becomes 5 i'll be getting out of the loop so yes you'll be using break there could not able to get some contents okay you will be getting the video as usual we'll go and get there so see so printing it and just we'll be using and here we'll be using a condition that is when the x value is 1 and it's basically 2 so while x is equals to 1 now while x is less than 10 i will be seeing i'll be incrementing the values okay printing is fine i'll be checking it here that if now x is equals equals to 5 now as soon as the x becomes 5 i need to come out of the loop that is break it's very simple let's go and run it so we get 1 3 and 5 that's all right very easy over there uh, it's printed 1 then 3 and it checked x is equals to 5 okay and then after 3 it becomes 5 so break this statement don't print 7 and 9 now in case that i want that okay you don't break this statement you go with the statements and don't print 5 over there right don't print 5 over there just uh we can say uh, skip the statement right so as you can see the man has done a very good homework there so copy over this print and get with the continue continue what it will do is it will skip the five value and will give you the output whatever you want okay that has been a problem i need to write it in the first It is It's there, and I need to cut it right here, and it's went in the processing part. Right, very really good. So we got three, seven, nine, and eleven. Very good to see. Right, guys, it's very easy. We got x is less than ten. So why did you get eleven? Yep, you have one. If one is less than ten, increment it by two, and check if x is equals to five. If not, then print the x. So that is incremented by two, and we got three there. And then the three comes here, increment by two, and check the five. So don't print the five. Continue and move on. We have five. Five plus two is seven. Okay, it's not equals to five. Print on seven. Seven plus two nine, and then for nine, and uh, then nine plus two you get nothing. That's eleven. Now eleven is less than ten, so no printing has been done there. Simple, right? Any queries there? Forty-five students are there, so any queries to anyone? Should move ahead. I see it's good to go. So now, if I want to print twelve too, what I'll do is, if I want to print twelve also, what I'll do, I know that twelve will not be getting printed with these conditions. So I will do is, uh, nothing but I'll write an else statement over here, and I'll write here print twelve also. That's it. So it comes as twelve. so what else does it in the loop if you use else there outside the loops there right what it does it will print a single line for you 
or whatever line you have written it will print for you that that is very simple over there yes, okay so else is can be used as a execution of a single line or one more line you can do okay so this is about else so now let's say if i want to print a table of 1000 or 2000 or something any number if i want to get a table of that using while loop how can i get it uh, let's suppose i have given a number uh, my number is 105 i want a table of it already now equals one and let's say while is while i is less than equals to 10 i want a table till 10 so i'll be printing percent d okay sorry percent d multiplied by percent d gives me percent d this is how you get actually write the table right 105 into 1 is 105 so i'll be writing the statements what is 105 first i will be writing the number and I will be multiplying it with i that is 1 okay and I, I will also be writing the value of this so number multiplied by i will give number into i very simple number into i and this is for the first line right if I have given i is equals 1 and this is for 105 so while i is less than 10 it will print 105 105 into 1 that is 105 so what for the next uh, 2 3 4 5 6 right so nothing to do is just you increment the values that's all now go and get it out so 105 into 1 is this for 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 what if you don't use this one your loop will be going for continuous okay so this is you can use there fine Okay, I can see. Let me see if the problem is there or not. Paste the code here. Which code you want to be pasted, Rajna? She is not saying anything. Okay, let me paste the latest code. That is this one. This. Copy. I think she would be asking for this. Shubhadi, Shubhjit Swain. Program is not getting executed. What's the problem, Shubhjit? Can get a snap over the uh, WhatsApp over there, and I will see what's the problem there. anyone having more problems in dealing with the executions of the program now got executed very good what about Prajna no issues fine good to go okay so this is how while loops work on now let's see for loop okay so let's move to for loops so we saw that while loop will be continuing till the condition is true that right until the condition is true it will be go, going on for over and over iterating for else right now what comes in the for loop for loop we actually in for loop we have the number of iterations we know the number of iterations we want to get out there right i know i know that i want to print a same thing for number of 25 times so i will simply writing it for that for this and this and this print for 25 times that's all very simple right now let's say i have a list of companies over there which is coming giving some certifications let's say that i have a name of some companies or i have some companies over there let's say their names as microsoft we have ipm there we have google out there okay we have some three companies or oh, let's take we have spacadil that is nothing but hp 
So we, we have a list of companies over there, right? So these are the companies. Now what I say, I'm writing that for i in, i is nothing but any uh, particular variable you can take. Please mute, someone has unmuted, please mute down. So for i in the companies, I have to see who is there. So actually I have plugged earphone. So it's making some noise in my ear. Okay, thank you. So now for i in companies, I will be printing i. I'll printing the value of i. So what is i actually doing? It will check that what are the number of elements having in this company lists. Okay. So it will get me print out Microsoft, IBM, Google and Hewlett Packard one by one accordingly. Okay. This is how it will be working on. Now if I write that, you will be more clear with this. That if I write for I in IBM, for I in IBM, let me print I. Okay. For I in IBM, get me print I. Now what it will do, if we have given a particular list or something like this, it will see, it will check whether that any of the element is there, one, okay, we have two, we have three and four elements. So it has printed for the four number of times, okay. Now if I give the I in IBM, it will check individually the characters of this one. That is I, B and M. So if I run this, I'll be getting I there, B there and M. It's very simple. Someone has written something? No. Okay. You will be getting a value of something like this. Okay. Now we'll go with the same same methods and the same techniques what we have used in while. Now I'm writing that for I in companies for I in companies print the value of I and as soon as I value becomes IBM or as soon as add it become Google you just go and break the statement okay so what will happen it will check that for I in the companies it will print all the values of the I and after printing it will check whether it is Google or not if it is Google then break the statement very simple so let's see that Microsoft has been printed, IBM has been printed, Google has been printed, but Hewlett Packard, it has not been printed out there. Why? Because in the third step, it has been found Google and it has been baked over there. Simple. No issues still now. Fine. So you're brilliant students there. Okay. Now, if I want to continue again, it's the same method. You're going for i in companies i'll be checking uh, if my no, i'll be checking first now okay i'll be checking it first that if the i is equals to google okay let's drop that okay this is then i need to basically continue and if it is not so, I'll be printing the values of i. Okay, it's equals to equals to. You're seeing Microsoft, IBM, and Hewlett Packard now there. Why where has Google been gone? So for the number of iterations it is doing, it will be checking that if i is equals to Google. As soon as it becomes, it will skip the Google and it will print the rest of it, everything there, right? So this is how for loop works man. I, I have said you that a for loops work. I know actually that how no, how number of times I would be repeating my loop. So I can give it basically like for x in range of you can say 6 print x. So we'll be getting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Why? Because I said uh, in uh, like whatever you will be giving in the range, you will be getting minus one number from that, that is five, okay. 
but that is one two three four five six it your range is six actually okay this is how you can work now in this range there we have also at for i in range of two cross six what does it mean two cross six print i we are starting printing from 2 instead of 0 now I have, I have given that I want numbers from 2 ending up to 5 that is 6 I have given 6 now number will be getting up to 5 that is 2 2 5 2 3 4 5 it's very simple now let me write for the last code and then we'll ask you what if any problems are there for me okay so for i in range of 1 2 20 with the intervals of 2 and I'm printing the values of i. See guys, here I have written i 20 and again a new number that is 2. What is now 2 this? So I will be printing the values between 1 to 19 and I will be printing those in the intervals of 2 or you can say as a gap of 2 that is if I print 1 and then I will give a gap of 2 then I will print 3 and again a gap of 2 then 5 and then 7, 9 and so on. And your numbers will be printed till 20 that is till 19 so let's go and see so we have got 1 then 2 gap 3 2 gap 5 7 9 11 13 till 19 after 19 it comes 20 gets over so you have actually numbers till 19 there out so the third one actually in every time the third number in the range will be standing for the number of intervals you are doing there okay right and you can also write here also that so some extra noise is coming extra noise is coming yeah. from, from where so i think so it's from your side maybe from my side no actually i'm sitting in my room there's no noise there crackling noise Crackling noise. Oh, it's coming from my side. It's, there's nothing like. Okay. Let's move yeah, on. It's okay. Okay. So print loop ended. Let's run this. So I get 90 and then loop ended. Simple. That's all. So someone texted something. Let me check it. Two to five. As we have assigned multiple values to one variable, please explain that. As you have assigned multiple values to one variable, which variable? You are, you are asking of this one, Hetrat. This company's one. How are we dealing with that? Okay. And. Uh, what this has two comma six means start from two and end with six no it end with five it doesn't end with six it will go till six but will end it at five okay if two comma seven is there then it will end with six okay and what is your name let me see it's sir harsha okay so sir harsha it's it will end with five and Hitrat, what are you asking that these uh, companies I have taken their uh, multiple values this one right it is basically a list I will be dealing with this today if I get time what's the time 7.15 yes I can deal with it today okay so okay so a comma b means a and ends with b minus one. exactly yes correct Prashna it's good any more problems to anyone We can see no, no, I can't see anything. Okay. No, sir. Okay. The rest of you are having problems. And there are 43 people. I don't think no problems are there. Zero, sir. He is having zero problem. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Let's move ahead. So this is how a for loop works. Let me give you a next more problem for the saw. Okay. So let me take the company names. Or let me we have some company over names there, right? Or let me take some names of my friend.
okay and i'm taking their both dates just let it be okay so what are those 10 15 and 14 yep now i'm writing that if i check for four names in okay leave it for x in names if i print x what i'll get it's very easy i'll getting the three names over there if i write for dates in birth print dates but i'll get all the dates there now if i want that every name should be printed with an individual date i want satyam with 10 i want himanshu with 10 i want uh, mayuk with 10 i want satyam with 15 himanshu with 15 and everyone with the every individual element that is simple right so what i will do is i'll be writing that for x in names check for y in birth and then print both the values of x and y uh, you will getting satyam 10 satyam 15 satyam 14 himanshu with all three and mayuk with all three this it's a very good question actually it comes in the exam sometimes as list and unlist right we'll be dealing with that also okay uh, no sir okay no problems right there fine okay now let's move to uh, what is actually slicing okay now we are all know that what is a slice right it's maybe a piece of cake or bread right so let's see slicing these were some of the boring topics which we have uh, studied till now for me these is actually some <laughs> boring topics now let's uh, have some interesting topics right there fine guys okay now this could be boring for you but it's interesting for me so let's start now you have to use your brain very quickly actually so what are slicing now slicing is something we keep a cross or we keep something as sliced we cut out a something part of from any whole part right as you slice something you what you do actually you cut something from a whole part that we actually doing so i'm taking vowels as a a e i o u okay I have taken vowels something as a e i o u now or else let me take it as if i do something like this you will be but i have problems let me take it as a e i o u that's good to see so okay we have completed our century today fine so vowels we have a e i o u now if i want to see at what exact position which value is there now if i print that what is the value of vowels one that in vowels what is the first position of the object so let me tell you that what is the positions and everything right we get okay so in python what happens everything you write there have a particular specified position of it okay everything so and this position numbering starts with zero always zero when you deal with our programming language you will see that there it's come with one we start counting there with one but in python we'll deal with zero then one then two then three and so on so if i write a comma e comma e uh, sorry i o and u so what is the value of a and what is the position of a is zero followed by one two three and four so what is the first value always is 0 0 1 2 3 4 right guys okay but when you count it from the backward side this was from the front side when we count the same from the backward side we will be dealing minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and minus 5 so from the front side it's 0 1 2 3 4 from the back side it's minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 right and for seeing how many elements are there particularly in any of the uh, it can be data type i will be dealing further so for seeing the length of it you will 
So I specifically have to write the length. Okay, now this the length of whatever you want. Suppose I am writing vowels. So how many elements are there present inside the vowels? I can see it's five. Okay. okay, very good. See. So is this point clear? That what are zero, one, and minus one? Everyone, to everyone, is it clear? So I should move ahead with doing slicing. What is zero? And what is minus one from where it comes and how to deal with everyone is clear with that? Yes, yes. Okay, I can see yes from many of them. It's okay to have been clear. Okay, see, I have got this guy. Okay, S H A I K H Shek, I say. Okay, please, or you, whenever you join, na, you click on only join, don't click on present. Okay, that's take a very problematic situation. So please take care of that from tomorrow. Okay, so we have got length of it. Now, if I want to check that what is the vowels first position or zero, okay, so let me take for the first position. What is the first position of the vowels? I will be getting its E out there. Why? Because I, as I have said that the A is having a zero position. That is a first position in the Python you can say is zero. Whenever anyone talks about the first position, that is zero. Okay. One, what you are getting is the second position actually. You write one, but it is the second position. When you have been given to find the first position, it, if it is written that find the first element or find the third element of vowels. So you don't need to write vowels of three. That's not exactly okay. So we're dealing with this all. Okay. So coming up. So vowels of zero is a, right? Vowels of three is o. Let's deal with this. Is the vowels of third element is o? Is the third element o right there? No. Why? That's because third is one. So, if you have been asked to find the third element, go and print the second element. Okay. If you ask for the fourth element, go and print the third element. Keep. So, what is the difference between slice and split? Okay. Slicing and splitting. Good question. Who is this? Thereby, very good. See, guys, uh, slice is something where you go for the individual elements uh, writing. Now, suppose in the first case, I have written that. If I have written that A, E, I, O, U, right, Devan? If I have written W uh, or V equals to this, 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 and I have written split this, what it will do, it will create individual element inside a list and will split everything individually. Now it is exactly in one particular string and uh, try to understand it will basically split everything every individual into a particular list what we have seeing as here okay so let's see what comes here so if you come and see v you will get in there right and slicing is something you individually access the elements now you can slice here okay you can slice here too but now you can slice here okay so this is the part of how you split and what is basically splitting so when I will be dealing with list, I will say you that how to split elements. So Devan, are you clear with this? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Let's move ahead. So vowels of zero, vowels of three, and thus don't focus. Everyone, don't focus on this part. You will get confused. I'll dealing with that. Okay. So this is how we actually slice the elements. Now let's suppose if I say that I want to see the vowels. And I want to see 1 to 3 across 1 to 3. Now, what is this? Now, if I write 1 to 3 again, this colon gives you actually a range that you are going to print a number or you are going to print the elements whose index number or whose uh, slicing or whose index number is 1. And in basically slicing, you get the index numbers, right? Okay. So, whose index number is 1. And from 1, you are printing every numbers from 1 to 2. Right, because in range, as I said, 
what the last number you will be giving you will be accessing only the minus one of that so let's give four so we'll be getting the numbers from one two and three so you'll be getting the index values of one two and three so let's see what comes there it comes e i and o so what is e in the first second is i and third is o okay so this is the first index the second is it and the third index if i write here for vowels of minus one what are you getting it u okay guys fine if i write vowels of nothing i'm not giving any numbers out there now okay so what i will get everything i'll get everything out okay so now if i get vowels and i write two there so what would i get i will be seeing everything till the one element or you can say for well, let me third there yeah. okay so we will seeing the elements starting from zero because i haven't specified anything before so we will getting everything till second element okay so let's see what it comes it comes a e n i so 0 1 and 2 has been printed as the third element is 0 so if you don't write anything there you will be getting everything till the last whatever you have written if i write the same for vowels of from you can say from 0 to or 2 to last to last two to last okay so if you write something like this you will be getting the second you will starting your uh, output from the second element and till the last element okay like i have written nothing so it has taken from the starting so if i write nothing in the last you will be getting everything after the two so the second position is i right zero one and two so you get everything after the i that is O and U, I, O, U, everything. So if there it will be something more, then you will be getting everything out there. This, this is how you get the slicing over there. Okay. So if I slice vowels and I slice minus 4 to minus 1, what I get is, what is minus 4, guys? Minus 4 is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So from minus 4, minus 3, minus 2 and minus 1 you have got. Okay. Don't try to get minus 1 to minus 4. Okay. It will not be printing like from backward. It will always print from the frontwards. So give minus 4 to minus 1. Give the lesser value here and then the greater value here. Okay. Minus 4 is less than minus 1 raise. Okay. So this is how we slice the elements actually. If I write vowels. With the two colons and two what i get i'll see the number all the uh, a e i o u with an interval of two now with an interval of two actually because uh, you know right if i was giving x comma y comma z so what does this z means actually the number of intervals so here i've given first colon then the second colon think it off as a comma and then the value that is two so it will be printing a then give a gap of 2 then we will print everything let's go so it will print a then give a gap of that and then i and then give a gap and then u so, so i think this would be clear to everyone you need actually to practice this today then only you can get it indexing is something slicing and indexing it is also called as indexing okay so let me write it here so slicing or indexing is something which you need to practice very much then only you can get your customized results so what okay there are a lot of values questions what is the difference slice method uh, used for arrays the split method are used for strings it divides a string into substrings okay that's a bookish definition fine so if you want to find the index of any one of the vowel the vowel dot index a yes correct that is the right value so priya naran as a prince you prints all the values what she has prints you what you are trying to ask supriya print you print all the values i didn't get it actually 
no no i was answering to your question my question this one okay fine okay so this is how we get to the indexing over there so the one someone has answered your question that is uh, slice and uh, split and that's a bookish one so you can refer it also okay so let's go ahead okay sir ah, that is now we'll dealing with the what's the time it's 32 okay we have 15 minutes let's deal with lists over there okay let me give it a bigger let's see what is list actually so guys list is a collection of data which are ordered and are changeable changeable you can say is mutable okay in the exam you will get a question that what are list what is the basic difference between a list and a tuple so guys list are changeable okay list can have some duplicate values and is always written under the square brackets like whatever i have used now these all are list actually this these are list okay so let's go and see so what i have said list is a collection of data which are ordered and changeable that is mutable okay i can have duplicate values so let me write the companies i have i think the companies i have the name of companies here let's copy it So I have created a list of companies now. Okay, we have created a list of companies and go and print the companies. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so how is going with the Kaggle and PyCharm students? Is there any problem for you? I forgot actually you were doing in somewhere else. So how? Is the environment going to you all? There's no answers. Okay. So no problem in PyCharm. Well, that's good to see. Very good. Okay. And that Kaggle boy, where are you? What was his name? I forgot, sorry. Okay. So companies is this. Print the companies. We have that. And you can go and check the type of it, which is companies over there. So you'll get it is a kind of list. So you go and check how many characters are there in your companies. So you'll be seeing you have four uh, character, four elements actually in your companies, right? So you need to access the company's first one. What is the first element of your company? I'll say it the first element, IBM is the first element of the company. Why? Because the zeroth element is the Microsoft. So the first element is the IBM. Again, for according to index values, right? But the question will be asked to print the second element of the companies. Then you will be printing one. If it asks for the first company, uh, first uh, uh, value, then you will be printing just zero. Okay, that's all how you go with this. Okay. So that why I have created there that vowels is equals to A E I O U. Split is basically a method of how you can split the functions or split the characters into a kind of list. So you can write here split. What it will do? It will split the strings into a list. So whenever you see your vowels, you will find a list over there. That's it. Very simple kind of thing. And now if I want to reverse my list. Reversing a list is something when you uh, you can say as uh, reverse the characters actually. So A is uh, A E I O U. You are having A E I O U, right? And you want U to become first and then followed by O I E and A. So what I will be doing is I will writing vowels of just minus one. So it will print you a reverse of that. That is O, U, O, I, E, and A. That's very simple. It's okay. It is how you can work on with. So let's see some methods of a list. So let's say if I want to add something. Let's see. Uh, if I went for shopping, 
groceries and I have a list of my groceries items that is what I actually shop so I'm writing that and these are my some of the favorites oh, you can go with well, let me see okay fine so I have a list of groceries I have went for a shop and I want to buy all these okay you can go and check for your grocery so this is basically my three elements so I can check my list how many elements I want to buy so I want to buy three elements okay now uh, meanwhile by buying the elements I thought okay I need to buy something more and I need to add it to my list so for that meanwhile I have got that okay I should take the chocolates to okay so let's add chocolate to my list so how can I do that you have to write your list name there okay then you have to write dot append append what does it append it uh, adds the value or it adds the particular object you want to add in your list okay so let's add, add it so let's, let's take the common chocolate that is okay what's that it's actually name of okay, i'm forwarding the name so let's take the dairy milk now you see your grocery you will be seeing that uh, more element has been added into your list okay this is how you can add anything so for adding you have two techniques that is append and extend you have the to add everything now if i want that uh, let's suppose my mother calls me and uh, she says that uh, bring for medicines for me okay so my first priority will be to bring medicines before buying all these things okay so i need to basically uh, change something in my list i need to write medicine in place of maggie and then followed by these all okay so i need to actually shift this and i need to add something in my first place that is basically i need to insert something in my first place and then shift it everything okay so i'll be inserting some and then you get a new method called as insert so grocery dot insert and you need to write where you need to insert i need to in, i ac accordingly uh, to medicines i will be giving the priority in the first so for the first i know zero is the first value okay so in the zero i will writing what medicines right there so let's go ahead print your grocery over there and you'll see medicines followed by maggie sprite and all these all right any problems still now let me check so this is the methods how we can add anything in the list happen function yes guy you can use extend or you can use insert that is you can use it so problems to anyone let me clear the remove method too no i can see there is no one responding so no problems so let's so go ahead and now uh, let's uh, talk that i went for buying and uh, or you can take another problem let's say yes, companies i am having companies okay so let's say these companies were giving internships in my college okay now what happened uh, ibm has or you can say the hewlett packard has refused to give the internship okay this company has refused to give the internship it's saying that i will be giving internship with you next year i don't want to give now okay so what i'll be doing is i'll be removing from i'll removing the hp from my list of the internships okay so that uh, students could not get confused there okay so what i'll doing is i'll be writing companies dot remove what you have to remove you have to specify under the course there that is i want to remove this i don't want this there so you'll get your companies there you'll find this out there okay it's very easy to see okay nice well now what happens now if i say that okay i don't uh, if the internships are over and meanwhile if the google internship are over and we are left only with the microsoft and ibm internships i don't want to display google there right okay so since it has got over i don't want to display it and i know that in my list google is in the last place so for rem removing any object or any element from the last place 
you don't actually need to define any space or any option there you just write your data or your list name and just write pop pop will definitely automatically remove the last element from your list and it will say you that whatever it has removed that is it has removed google out from there so check for companies and you will see that microsoft and ibm are the two values exactly okay so now this pop can be also used for uh, removing elements by giving particular index values right suppose i write companies dot pop and i write here minus 2 minus 2 and what is minus 2 now minus 1 is ibm minus 2 is microsoft so i'm removing this uh, i get microsoft has been removed so let's check your companies okay this problem companies you are getting only ibm is there now okay now you want to clear your list suppose ibm has also completed the certi uh, certifications and internships now you want to clear your list okay so you're writing companies dot clear now you see companies so sorry second problem so companies now you can see it's an empty list nothing is there so for this year my internships are over i don't need this list so i'm basically deleting this so you have to delete the list that is companies over there so now company has been deleted now if you go and write for the companies you will get an error there because companies is okay this is okay for this too you will be getting an error because companies is not defined now because you have deleted the so this is all how you can access the lists over there fine so tomorrow we will be discussing from the tuple sets and we'll go ahead fast more fastly so we have completed 153 cells today and yesterday i think i think 70 or something we have completed what okay yesterday it was mm, 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 it is okay yesterday it was 60 so three times or two times more okay stop your recording